So just pulled up here to Lowe's and today I want to get a few things done around the house and I want to show you guys some of the things that I'm doing and how I do them. But more importantly, I just want to motivate some people because I know like we all feel like we can't get things done. We're too busy. We don't know how. We're just not motivated. I'm going to give you some tips on how I get motivated. Maybe do this recurring uh, kind of video series, just getting things done around the house, all kinds of things. Let's get started. It's not even Halloween, you already have the Christmas decorations out in full force. I'm gonna grab one of these, some of these, and definitely grabbing some of this. And I guess while I'm at it, I'll grab a couple of these. So sorry for the bad angle, but I was able to score all this cool stuff from Lowe's. But there's one more thing I got to grab on my list, which is spackle that I left in my brother's house. And quite frankly, I don't want to buy any more of it because I bought enough of it uh, lately. So we're going to go grab that and then we're going to get back and get started. All right, so I kind of hate using this thing. All right, let me see if I remember, and I'm in. All right, so this is what a house with no kids, well, soon to be kids, looks like. Nothing to do here, right? Get what we need and get out. Ah, my spackle tools. Don't forget to lock up. Good to go. We've got to take care of our supplies, which sometimes can mean buckling them in so they're safe. Uh, just as a side note, I'm in no way sponsored or affiliated with Celsius at all, but they're they're pretty good drink. They have a lot of caffeine, 200 milligrams, which may be a lot for some people, but um, they help get me started sometimes on these weekends when I really am a little tired from a long week. First things first, we're gonna start with fixing this little hole that our dog Zelda, our innocent little dog Zelda, has dug in the drywall, and waiting to go out for the yard, and we weren't there in time. This is a small job, so I'm going to use my bucket of drywall or spackle here, I mean. And I'm going to work right out of the bucket instead of putting it in the pan. I'm going to take this rag. I'm going to dampen it a little bit. I like to do that sometimes when the drywall is particularly dry. Kind of like you do with cement. So that the drywall doesn't absorb all the moisture out of the spackle. And for the first coat here, I know it's not going to be enough. We're going to need a couple coats of this. So we're going to do our best with the first coat here. I'm just gonna plop it in there, kinda. And I know I'm gonna need another coat to fix this up eventually. Let me see here. I don't like to work out of the bucket usually. I usually like to use this, the pan, but this will, this will work. All right, and that's as good as we're gonna get it for the first coat. So I'm gonna move on to the next job. All right, so we'll let that set up for a little bit and I'm gonna check this scroll brush out that I just bought here. And I bought this for a specific job. As you can see, um, in between the sliders of the doors here are pretty dirty and it's really hard to get to. I'm hoping this wet scrub brush can kind of get in there and I can use my shop vac here to uh, clean up any of the mess that I create. <laughs> Little guy right here is named Scoople, kind of like the Scoople River, which is nearby. Uh, newest member of our household here. Well, pretty good, guys. It's important to note here we weren't striving for perfection with this little job, just trying to get it better than it was. We definitely accomplished that. On to the next thing, right? 
So as you can see, the yard definitely needs some attention. Uh, there's dog toys. There's all kinds of kids' toys. My pool stuff, uh, which is going to be something I'm going to try to get to by the end of this video. You can see my pool definitely needs closing. Uh, there's a fly in there. Let's get him out. And we want to try to get that done today. But first, I'm going to try to get this yard straightened up because I cannot do anything in a messy yard. I know, guys, I'm a really fast worker. Um, this isn't even sped up footage. I just moved this fast. Just want to take this time to say, uh, if you see any products in this video, they're all going to be available in the links in the description. And if you click on that uh, link, it does help our channel. If you buy anything on Amazon, even if you don't buy that product, if you buy anything within a 24-hour period, helps our channel out with a small commission and it doesn't cost you anything. It's another one of those little odd jobs that I've been putting off. I was supposed to put this on here a long time ago. It's just one of those things I just didn't get around to. Um, it's so easy, guys, but it's so easy for these things to just get away from us. So I'm just gonna pop this on. It's actually, it should be quite easy, I hope. This screw's gotta come out a little more. Sometimes it's kind of cool to just take in some of the uh, fall scenery in your own backyard on a nice day like today. Alright, one of the final projects we wanted to get done, and we gotta get done before the season starts, is closing the pool. It's been taking us forever, right? A couple days ago, the water was really cloudy, so I threw some of this stuff in here, some clarifier, right? And now you can see the pool is fairly clean, but everything's settled on the bottom. We wanna run the vacuum, get that stuff up. We already removed our, our uh, ladder, which is here. So we're gonna get the stuff off the bottom, and then we're gonna close this baby up. I'm trying to get this thing to stay put in there to run the manual back over and over and this thing continuously just popping up and losing suction no matter how good I held it down because it's really not sealed, it's just plastic. Um, we're gonna run the uh, robot. Just as a frame of reference, this footage is probably sped up about eight to 10 times, but this little robot is still fairly quick in real time. And I'll tell you what, it's a relatively inexpensive robot. And uh, the only thing you don't get is it doesn't climb uh, walls, which really, to me, isn't a deal breaker for the price point. All right, so this thing here is pretty interesting. It's a cool float. It's a pool pillow, actually. Um, I'm gonna open this up and check it out. I've never used one of these before because usually I just throw one of the old floats in the pool at the end of the season and kind of leave that under there. But uh, people online said these things are way better. And this thing is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. So, it looks like you just inflate it. Let's see here, guys. Okay, you inflate this thing, right? And then you tie it with the ropes that are included. So that's in the water, but the ropes are tight enough to keep it centered. We're going to get this thing inflated and check it out. So this thing is way bigger than I pictured it to be. As a frame of reference, I'm gonna throw it in the pool so you guys can check it out. I have a 16 foot round pool. Look at this thing, it's massive. Something tells me the kids would have a lot of fun with this thing in the uh, summertime, but it's not for that. So it looks like our robot is making some good progress here. Uh, the bottom of the pool, although it did kick up some of the uh, 
the stuff on the bottom, make the water a little cloudy. It does look overall cleaner. So I'm gonna let this run for a few more minutes, maybe 20 more minutes, and I'm gonna skim the top and I'm gonna begin lowering the water level. So guys, if you're gonna be um, basically removing the water yourself, I recommend getting something with this little Everbuilt pump, right? You see this thing here? It's really simple. It's got a, pl a plug here, you just plug it in and this part goes in the water. See that little, that thing is an inlet there. So it sucks the water in through the bottom here and then it just pumps it out here, which is what you hook your garden hose and just put to the drain, right? So right, right through it out. You don't submerge this thing all the way. You just submerge it about this far. So what I do actually is I just take the, uh, the cord and I wrap it around one of these parts of the pool here, just wrap it around and I lower it as the pool level lowers. So it just stays submerged about this much into the water. And I'll show you that shortly. All right, so as you guys can see, I'm not ready to use this yet, but I got it kind of in the water submerged about halfway. I wrap this here and then I'm gonna plug this in. And as I need to submerge more, I'll just kind of pull it through and I can submerge it more, right? Or bring it back if I pull it tight the other way. I know this looks like uh, quite the battle here, but uh, it really wasn't too bad. It did want to get away on me a couple times and do its own thing. But once I uh, figured out a way to kind of get these uh, ropes tied to each corner, I was able to just tie it to the pool and keep it fairly centered. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, just took a little learning. Some of you pool experts, I might have did this wrong, but everyone said to kind of keep it centered, but loose. They only gave me two ropes and I didn't really like how that felt. So I cut it into four, kind of centered the best I could, but I think it's going to work, right? So now that the pool robot's been working for a while and I got the pool pillow centered, I'm going to grab the hose and I'm going to hook it up to the, uh, the pump to pump out some of the water. I'm going to let the cool robot run basically until the battery dies because I know it doesn't have that much longer left. It only lasts a few hours. And we can begin pumping the water out while that's running. So invariably, just like anything else in life, when I was taking the hose off, the insides of the nozzle came off with the hose. Always problems, guys. Always problems. Seems like it wants to come out easy. But I'm thinking we may have to wind up replacing that because that is not ideal. Good thing, it wasn't too tough to fix for now. So we're gonna hook this up now. Part of the winterization process is adding this uh, winter shock for the pool. It says to add one pound per 6,000 gallons. My pool's about 6,500 gallons, and this happens to be one pound, so it works out pretty good for me. So before the level gets too low, I'm just gonna add a lot of it here, and then just add some around the pool real quick. And hopefully that'll disperse before the level goes down and I have to turn the pool pump off. This is probably the most fun and easy part of this entire pool closing process. This thing's called the winter pill or the pool pill, some call it. All you really got to do is uh, take this little blue pin, insert it as I've already done, and you just throw this thing in your pool, right? Boom. And now what that's going to do, it's going to release a little bit of that blue chemical all winter long which is gonna to help to keep the pool sanitized, clean and clear. So when you open your pool, you have way less to contend with. And that's all you gotta do with this thing, super cool. So the day's been going on a little long here, so I decided to give this guy here a little bit of additional help by opening the drain line at the bottom. There's also a plug that I just sat this stick on to keep it open, if you can see the bottom there, it's kind of hard to see. Um, and I just kind of wedged my uh, pool hose, some of my hoses up to it. I think a hose may be able to screw into here. I just wedged them up and ran them to the line. So now I have two draining methods, right? So what I want to do now is I want to begin to cover the pool, right? And I can get this out of here now because it's going to keep draining down there, even with the cover on. Obviously, the goal is to get it way below your inlets. And I'm not quite at that point yet. Because when you get it below your inlets, then you can uh, disconnect your pool pump and all that and have no water in it so that it doesn't freeze. All right, let's start that process.
Uh, this never goes as smoothly as you'd like, especially when you're uh, by yourself doing this. I was able to use my telescoping pole to kind of uh, act as an extra set of hands that were extra long and kind of get this over the pool pillow. And once I was ready to like start securing this, I realized, as always, every side's going to pull in while you're on the opposite side, right? So I did figure out a little trick that I'm going to show you guys. So just uh, stay put here and I'll show you what I'm using to secure this in a moment. So here's what I'm using. I have these little bungee cords and you can see they're really small. I'm going to show you exactly how I use them. Poke it through the pool cover, wrap it around the pole, and poke it through the other side of the pool cover above the rope that's inside of the pool cover. So this should make opening the pool real easy. It's the pool. It's huh? the, the goalie. I should warn you, this was a method that I've seen on the internet a few times where you take like saran wrap or plastic and tightly wrap it around the pool cover to act as an additional, you know, method of holding it down. It, you may get better results than I got because I do have a deck that's really close to the pool and I wasn't really able to get it around as many times or as tightly as I wanted and I wound up taking this off afterwards. If you don't have a deck, you shouldn't have any problems. Now that we're done all that, I'm simply going to undo the uh, water drain in the bottom of my pool filter. And I'm going to disconnect all these lines just to get the water out of everything. Um, I might take this thing into the shed. Um, I might not, but that's a story for another day, guys. I'm a little tired today. But that should ensure that our unit here doesn't freeze. Let's put this away for safekeeping. So I hope this video helped you guys. Hope you learned something. Maybe you got motivated to get some things done. Whatever. You know, I made some mistakes along the way. You're going to do that too. Um, check out the description of this video. There's links for all the products. Even if you don't buy a product, if you click on that link and then buy anything on Amazon within the next 24 hours, helps our channel out. Gives us a little, a little commission because we directed you towards Amazon to buy something. Anyway, please subscribe for more, guys. I want to do more of this and kind of just help motivate you guys, teach you guys some stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one.